The market sells off and then bounces before closing flat. So who's in control? This is Invest with Jacob. Okay, guys, so the market bounced all over the place in the futures, but when the market actually opened, they opened down and sold off down toward our 3,800 target before bouncing up and then closing basically flat. Now, the bounce does look corrective at the moment, which means we probably need another low. I'll get into that in just one second, but first, if you're new here, welcome to the show, guys. My name is Jacob Gabbard, and this is Invest with Jacob, where we use Elliott Wave Theory to break down the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. I highly encourage you to hit that subscribe button down below so that you can get our daily S&P updates, our trade setups, and our buy alerts. All right, guys, with the corrective looking bounce that we'll go over on the charts, it does look like we might need another low here. So let's jump into the chart and take a look. Okay, guys, so here we are on the one hour futures chart. And as you can see, we got the move down here towards our 37.99 level that we talked about in yesterday's video. We got the bounce up toward 39.08 that we talked about in yesterday's video. And then we kind of chopped around to the downside from there. So this move up does look like it's only three waves at the moment, and it has invalidated a standard impulsive structure with the move down that we saw. But we still could make a diagonal. But overall right now, especially with the bounce that we got right back to the 1.0, we are going to count this move down at the open as the conclusion of wave three down here around 3,800. And then because this is a perfect bounce, we're going to call this uh, wave four and thus proven otherwise. And then we'd be looking for one, two, three, four, five, down towards 37.50 or so in wave five. I don't think it'll get as deep as 37.31 uh, as you see here, but 37.50, maybe even a little higher than that, 37.80 area. We would look for it to bottom, and then we'd look for a strong move up from the bulls. What we're probably going to get, even though this is a corrective bounce, it was big enough and long enough, had good enough duration that we're going to get positive divergence on this low on the one hour chart, which is very important. Very often when you get that, especially out of a support area, which we will be in on the MACD, that does tell you that the bulls are going to make some kind of move higher, whether it's a uh, sustained bounce or an actual rally. We're actually looking for a rally, but a sustained bounce could also happen. So the primary count, guys, is that we are looking for this wave five down into the 3780 area or so. As long as it breaks this wave three low, it qualifies. So 3799, well, 3806 and below. Um, look for that wave five low. And then we're looking for a five wave move off of that low, okay, to tell us that we're on our way towards that uh, 4300 area in the bigger C wave. So, in a bigger picture sense, guys, we completed A up here uh, at the 4100 area. We're completing B down here at around 3800, 3750, and then we're looking for C up toward the um, 4300 area to complete that corrective move we've been talking about since last October when we were at 3500. So um, the overall move is a little bigger than we originally expected uh, if it stays in form as it is right now. But overall, uh, basically the same move we've been tracking since last October. And so with this being our primary count, our secondary count would be a more bullish option where we have wave one up, wave two up, wave three, and this is wave four here. And this has to stay above the wave two low right here. And then we'd get wave five up in a leading diagonal, okay? Probably towards about the 3908 plus area, maybe 3915. And then we'd look for a very sharp wave two pullback to test the lows. And then we would look for a move higher in there from there um, in wave three of wave one. So this would be a leading diagonal for wave one of one. And then you get two and then three of one, four of one, five of one up towards about 4,100 or so. And then you'd look for two, three, four, and five up toward that 4,300 area there. So that is the bullish alternative where they can make one more high and give us five up. And then we would look for a sharp pullback and then up from there. But we would hold the low that is already in, and this would be all of this move down. This wave five would just move over, and the three would move back to where we had it yesterday. So that is also a possibility. Um, and then the final count that we've been tracking, guys, is the bigger move down in the bigger wave C that we've also been talking about since last October. We talked about that move up towards 4,300 and then a sell-off toward 29 to 2,500 in wave C to the downside. And if that's going to materialize sooner than later, we're looking for 3,700 to break. Okay, so 3,800 is a warning if they come down through 3,800 uh, quickly and they start to push through 3,800 with some force. We should be paying attention. 
uh, that we could be on the ride to the downside, but I'd still look for a wave two of three setup. So this would be from the top, from that uh, A wave high at 41 or 4,200. This down would be wave one. This up would be wave two. This would be one of three, and then you'd be looking for two of three, okay, and then down from there. And you really don't want this to go much more below 3,700 directly. Otherwise, we're probably already in wave three of three to the downside. So that's kind of what we're watching on that. A few different things, just depending on what kind of action we get, especially with the catalyst tomorrow. You have CPI. We can get a lot of different looks where they give us a spike low in the pre-market and then rally, or they give us a spike high and then move lower uh, or pull back and test this low. A lot of different things they can do with that. We know that it's a volatile move, but um, we also know that it's just a catalyst. The tone of the news doesn't move the market. In other words, positive move doesn't, news doesn't mean the market goes up and negative news doesn't mean the market goes down. So we'll look for that catalyst in the pre-market, see where we're at, and that will clarify our count pretty well, I believe. Over on the NASDAQ, okay, we have very similar counts on the NASDAQ. It's holding up much better than the S&P is. Uh, it, it's a little more difficult on the NASDAQ because of the contract roll last, last Friday that gave us a 130-point boost that was not really a market move up, but the contract futures were up that high, so we had to kind of adjust the chart because it's an ongoing chart here. So you have to assume that all of this part of the chart, this four, uh, three, four here, is all 130 points lower. And then it looks pretty much like the ES, just a little bit better off overall. But essentially what we're looking for is they did give us the same move down that gave us a lower low. And then we would look for this high to hold. So we got this lower low. We'd look for this high to hold. And then we'd look for that 11,600 area or so to hold on the move down and then rally from there in a five-wave move toward the 14,000 area. Now... The bullish alternative to that is that we did get um, a five-wave rally here off of the low, so this move up would have been five waves, and we would look for a wave two pullback to hold support, and then start wave three up from there and rally more directly in that manner. It does look a little better on this chart. The move up is a little more of a five-wave structure than it is on the S&P, so that is a little bit more bullish. So we could see them hold the low in the NASDAQ and go directly higher while ES or SPX makes another low before it moves higher because NASDAQ's been holding up better um, overall. So we still got the same structure to the downside. You just have to kind of move all this 130 points down to understand where it really is. Um, and we would look for this 11,600 area to hold on any kind of move lower. Uh, for the NASDAQ, we want to see the 11,200 area break for that bigger move down that would take us to the 6, 7,000 area or zone on the NASDAQ. So if they do break it down and they break through that 11, uh, actually it's 11,330 now with the contract roll. So it was 11,200 before, but since they moved it up on the contract roll, 11,330 is a zone to watch all the way down to 11,200. If those zones break, then it becomes more likely we're headed down in a bigger wave C. So those are the counts we are tracking on both charts. Again, CPI tomorrow is a catalyst and will likely give us clarity on exactly which count we're in and where we're headed. But until then, we'll keep track of what's going on. Guys, if you love the information that I put out in these videos and you want real-time market updates from me, you need to check out investwithjacob.com. There's a link down in the description. Go ahead and click that link. It will take you right over to the webpage. Once you're there, check out our membership plans area. We have two incredible plans, and they both come with a seven-day free trial because I want you to get in there and make sure you love it and become part of our trading team before you ever spend a penny. You can cancel at any time. We just started our training courses. Our first one is our Elliott Wave for Beginners course. We go over all of the Elliott Wave uh, basics that I teach, the way I use them, and my chart setup and everything else so that you can learn Elliott Wave the way I do it. All of our training videos come with our memberships. And inside the Invest with Jacob room, you get all of my uh, real-time market updates, all of my buy and sell alerts, all of your Elliott Wave questions answered, a midday video where I go over exactly where we are in the count, as well as the training videos you just saw. We trade the SPY and the QQQ, and we swing trade, which means our trades last anywhere from a few days to a few months, so it does not we don't trade quite as often as a day trading room does. However, if you are looking for day trading as well as individual stocks, you need to check out PT's Throne Room. In there, you get everything you get in the Invest with Jacob room, as well as individual stocks, day trading, and PT's reduced risk binary method that absolutely crushes the market. He gets you in at a cheap price and gets you big multiples on your money, and it's how he structures the trade that's so unique. It's something you have to see to understand, and that's another reason we give you that seven-day free trial. He also started a challenge account where he put 4000 into account, trading mini ES futures, averaging 3 to 4% gains per week, showing you how to build a small account into a large retirement or savings account. Guys, 
We'd love to have you in the room so we can make some money together. All right, key takeaways for today. We're looking for one more low as our primary path into that 37.50, 37.80 area. But anything below this wave three that we have on here qualifies as wave five down. However, it is also possible that this was all of this wave five. And we would be looking for a C wave rally up toward the 4300 more directly after one more high and then a sharp sell off and a diagonal setup. We do also have that bigger C wave looming and a break of 3,700 would be a strong warning that we are on our way down toward the 2,900 to 2,500 area. Over on the NASDAQ, same types of setups. You just got to remember the 130 points here has to move down because of the contract roll, but same basic setup. We're looking for a low where 11,600 holds and then we see a rally higher towards the 14,000 area. However, if they can hold this low and rally, we could see that more directly. And also we have the big C wave looming there as well. And a break of that 11,330 to 11,200 area would indicate that we are likely in that larger C wave. Guys, that is the market update for today. I will talk to you tomorrow.